Okay, we're back. This is part two of our excursion in support of Slava Ukraina. Hopefully, we won't have to be doing this next month because they'll have kicked Russia's ass by then. <laughs> in any case, okay, where we were at was we were leaving Brighton Beach. It was kind of like a low-key cold afternoon. We had a nice lunch, although once again I kind of got a stomach ache. <laughs> I guess I ate too much, but we really didn't have a chance. We we met a woman who was selling healthy products. Remember? Yeah, she was advertising for it on the boardwalk. Yeah, on the boardwalk on the beach, and uh, the last thing she wanted to talk about was the political situation over there. <laughs> but she did try to get us to uh, to buy some Metamucil or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> whatever she was selling. <laughs> she said, "Oh, you have to have probiotics, <laughs> whatever." And she any said, "It's no good to watch any of the news about the war." All right, yeah, that will cause you stress, and stress is no good, no yeah. good. But anyway, as we're going back to the car, I decided to ask the Mister Softy Truck guy because you figure he's going to talk to a lot of people, right? Yeah, he's a neighborhood guy. So he he said that he's spoken only to two people that wanted to talk that were interested to talking about the situation. You want to tell him? The first one was Ukrainian who was very against, you know, Russia being there and very upset about it. And the second one was a woman who was Russian and was very pro being yeah. there in favor of the invasion. Yeah. She said, "Oh yeah, they're doing the right thing." And that's it. 50-50 depending on who you were. So even with out getting the so the socialist, not the socialist, the, uh, propaganda. <clears throat> the propaganda from Putin's office and seeing all that stuff on our TV, she still thinks Russia was doing the right thing. Anyway, that was that was Brighton Beach. So let's see what happened after that. They call, by the way, Brighton Beach, Little Odessa by the Sea, yeah. the Brighton Beach bid. Okay, then uh, let's see. Then let's pass through. We went to see Nydia's thing. Okay, then a few days later, we went to the East Village, which is home. I used to live in. The, I lived. I used to live around there. I would say in the late nineteen seventies, and you had Ukrainians, and you had Polish people, and then you had punk people. <laughs> <laughs> so today we still have Ukrainians. We parked the car. And the first thing I saw was the Odessa restaurant, which, you know, was a diner. So go there a lot. It was a big place. In fact, they kept expanding. And that's where I learned about uh, French toast challah bread. And in fact, when, I, when my wife at that time was pregnant, I used to bring home, she asked me to bring home loaves of challah, which they would sell you for about $4. And they baked it right there. And kielbasa. She loved kielbasa. But in any case, that's neither here nor there. The restaurant, the sign is still there, but it's long gone. Unfortunately. Yeah, there was also another restaurant on the corner. This is on Avenue A between 7th and St. Mark's. So we walked there, and then we took a picture here of uh, Ukrainian flags. Here there were a lot of pro-Ukrainian flags and signs all over. Yes. Because you have... Uh, Ukrainian businesses and institutions. So, I guess, I guess I was kind of hungry. That could be a theme of these uh, <laughs> little things. And I knew about the place I had gone to in those days. The Kiev restaurant used to be owned by the same person who owned the Ukrainian East Village restaurant on on First Avenue. Is it First Avenue? I can't remember. It could be Second Avenue. And like Ninth Street, right next to the Veselka, which is that's because that was like popular. insane. Yeah, but we totally didn't eat there. Totally packed, even at off hours. So about three thirty, we went to the Ukrainian East Village restaurant. We didn't even it didn't seem open, but the but the door was open. We walked in, and uh, they had a big sign, "Glory to Ukraine," right in the front, and the blue and the yellow tablecloth. And then we go inside, and uh, 
They had some sunflowers. Yeah. And we're the only people in the restaurant at that time. And we ended up having. You let's see. I got a picture of the menu here. I had, I had. Uh, what did I have? Uh, Brian had Ukrainian beef goulash. Yeah, really good. Recommend it. Yes, and I I was torn between the big osh, which is called hunter stew, which is a uh, stewed sauerkraut, kielbasa, and pork. And then I was thinking about um, what was the other one? You know what? I didn't notice they had stuffed cabbage. I could have had that. <laughs> But I think I got the I got this I got the sauerkraut because I mean last month we had sauerkraut with a Reuben sandwich. Yeah. Which was one delicious taste. <laughs> this was cooked sauerkraut with pork, with a little kielbasa, but not big pieces, but really tasty. Yeah, you the know, goulash I, is really good. You know, it'd be worth and no stomach ache afterwards. Yeah. It might be worth growing up in Eastern Europe just for the sauerkraut. I don't know. They had good pumpernickel bread, too. Yeah. So we had a very nice lunch. By the time we left, there were more people there. I guess we were there in between times. But uh, the people were very nice, and, you know, they weren't very overtly political or anything, but uh, they were being polite to us. But they said they had gotten support. And I will say this. When I mentioned to other people about in the neighborhood about that we had dinner at the Ukrainian restaurant, they said very good because yeah. they need support. Yeah. Everybody goes to Veselka, you know, that's like a trendy I, thing now. I played for a little while in a punk band and we played at Max Fish and after after the gig, everybody said, Let's go to Veselka. You know, it's the it was the place to go. It was also the place to go in nineteen seventy eight, <laughs> but it wasn't quite so trendy. It was more like a a regular place. <laughs> anyway, so that then we went after. Oh, there's a picture of me with fruit soup. That's the other thing I had. <laughs> and oh, we had mashed potatoes, and you had broccoli. Yeah, I had both. I took one because I'm told that I have to eat green stuff once in a while. <laughs> oh, well, the food was all different colors, just like it's supposed to be. Yeah. Good for the health. You know what? I think we have to go back to them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, oh, that's right. On dessert, we had uh, strudel, a nice big piece of strudel cut that we could cut in half, and each had too much. It's a really good good place, and yeah. if you're in the area and Veselka's packed, yeah, they kind of need the business more, and the food is great. They also have a, uh, right behind there, they have a hole, which I took a picture of, where they said they've had some events to support Ukraine. And across the street, I took a picture here of the Ukrainian butcher that's still there. Uh, we'll put some of these pictures in the back. Oh, and the waitress, Joanna, from the uh, restaurant we ate at said they've gotten a lot of support, and not just from other Ukrainians, but from everyone in oh, the yeah. area. Yeah, so Ukrainian restaurant, when I do the paper, we'll, we'll get the address. But yeah. it's, uh, I believe it's 2nd Avenue between... Uh, 9th Street and St. Mark's. Yeah. So, which means that it's kind of across from the, the, the church, the, the old Dutch church. So we walked around. Veselka actually has some beautiful painted planters on the street, painted blue and yellow. Yeah. These colors. And they say nothing beats Veselka, beats B E E T S, because a lot of borscht there. They have a giant flag in the window. And the thing that you're supposed to say Slava Ukraina, Ukraini. And that's a great picture also. Somebody did a line drawing of uh, Zelensky. Zelensky, yeah. Okay. Actually, oh, yeah, and then they planted uh, yellow and blue flowers. Yes. What are these called? I have no idea. Uh, not chrysanthemums. Well, the yellow ones are the daffodils? tulips. Oh. The daffodils. But the blue one is, yeah, you know what? Everybody knows what this is called, but except for me. 
I'm surprised they're already blooming. And they have a big sign in the window, Eat Borscht, Support Ukraine. My father used to drink borscht, and I thought he was, who would want to drink that? <laughs> but I was wrong. Then it says they have a flag inside a, a poster, Ukraine belongs to Ukrainians. And then there's another one, our heart beat. What does that say, Nita? I think yes, that means near. Our hearts beat. Our hearts beat near you. Yeah, and that's uh, beats with, of course, two E's. Okay, then, pardon me for doing this, but I like to take pictures of Ukrainian flags that are in the window of lingerie stores. We found that too. Right? <laughs> or anywhere. <laughs> well, we took anywhere, but that's good There's too. the sign of... Oh, yeah. Uh, Somebody did a poster that's up a couple places. I need ammo, not a ride. Right, yeah. I need ammo, not a ride. That was a famous saying. At the beginning of this confrontation, which unbelievably enough is still there, still bombing every day. Then we pass by the B&H restaurant. Which I recently read as New York's last dairy restaurant. It used to be right near the Gem Spa, but now the Gem Spa is closed. The Gem Spa was the place on the corner of St. Mark's and Second Avenue that specialized in everything. Every anything you want to read, you get there plus an egg cream. <laughs> we took pictures of various flags and windows, which was cool. And flags then and churches, churches. And then we found a BMW that has uh, the license plate LVIV. We'll and the Ukrainian uh, right, the symbol. symbol on it. We'll put that one from this one. Yes, yeah, so we'll put that in the paper. Uh, lots of flags. Then there's a, a, a church, St. George's Church, I believe. You can leave donations of medicine and food only. Uh, and then it says... Uh, we have to emphasize this. It says, Dear neighbors, thank you for your kind words and support in Ukraine's fight for freedom. Some of you asked how to help. For events, follow Razom. R, you want to read it? R A Z O M dot org on social media. And then also the Self Reliance Credit Union, 108 Second Avenue. Uh, and they accept all financial donations. And then we went into the St. George Ukrainian Catholic Church. I didn't, I don't know if you're allowed to take pictures in a church, but I did. It's pretty beautiful. You want to write about, you want to tell them what we did in there? We just watched and looked around. There are a lot of people praying, a lot of Ukrainian people. They kept praying. Yeah. Mostly women just sitting in the front there praying, 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 praying. After about 10 or 15 minutes, I guess we got prayed out and we had to leave. Yeah. But I had a friend, I was telling you, I had a friend who was married to the daughter of a professor of, I think he was a professor, he's a Russian, he was a Russian professor, but the wedding was the Russian Orthodox Church wedding and it went on for like a whole day. Yeah. <laughs> because people never stopped praying. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, they had a stand with Ukraine walk, but it had already happened when yeah. we uh, visited. So then when we went out, tell them what's across the street. McSorley's. Yes. <laughs> Which is Which been... was packed. Yes, and they let you go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike Cooper Union, if you have to send your kid to college, don't, you, don't go to Cooper Union because they were very <laughs> unfriendly. Poor Brian had to go to the bathroom, and what happened? And both. They have one side of the street and the other side. I'm sure they get a lot of public monies. Yeah. And they were so mean to you. Yeah, they said you're not allowed in. Not allowed in. Ugh. And McSorley's had a very old-fashioned urinal. Like, it was like being in the 1900s, so it was very <laughs> exciting anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and then we went next door to McSorley's. I was looking for the Ukrainian, what was it, Surma? The Surma Ukrainian shop, which I used to be friends with the owner back hundreds of years ago. We'll get more to that later, actually. But uh, we went to a place that was a copy center. And on the window, it said, Ukrainian flags for sale, $4 each. 
which I recently just after we I gave her money because it was also donation. So I gave her some nice money. We got two flags. Yeah, we got a few flags like these originally. Right. But then I come back to the office and I went on Amazon, of course, and we got all these other ones. You see them in the background here. Listen, anybody want a flag? We have a lot of flags. Yeah, just as you, know, you can uh, see. Come by our office, 481 Van Brunt Street. And you just got to put it in your window, okay? Show support. Not because, like, really, I never really followed the Ukraine. I know that, um, you know, they were involved in World War II. I know that uh, they got their freedom when the Iron Curtain fell or a little after that. And then I know that Russia took over Crimea. Yeah, 2014, I think. But to be honest, I never took it that seriously. I didn't really know what it was. Yeah, I didn't think about it as much until the invasion. Now. And then when they talk about separatists, like, what are separatists? I don't even yeah. know. I mean, I think separatists are in the U.S. Congress, but yeah. hopefully we keep them in check and we don't lose our territory. Yeah. Although I might not be going to Tennessee or Texas or any of those places because why would I want to support... Well, we're getting into different Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are like separatists. <laughs> anyway, but uh, but really I should have paid more attention. In any case, we go into the copy shop, and we met uh, a very nice woman and another woman, and we bought the flags. And the woman's family is from uh, Ukraine. Yes, why don't yeah. you tell about her? Um, I can't remember that much, but I know she said both sides of her family are from Ukraine. Yes, she wanted to know if we... She was a photographer. She gave me her card, and I have to send her a copy of this when it comes out. Yeah. And we asked if we could take their picture, and they were very. She, she fixed her hair very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good picture, actually, uh, with the big sunglasses. And uh, she wanted to know if. She asked if we were Ukrainian, and I, even though I'm not like very much, a little bit going back on my mom's side is a. Uh, I have some family that was originally from Ukraine, so. She was happy about that. From Lviv. Yeah. She said that she was involved in some kind of a store that was Ukrainian and something else. Mm. I can't remember. Anyway, so we went there. Then we go outside. That's and the shopkeeper is nice, too. She said even though she's Indian, she's uh, still yeah. s showing support to Ukraine. All the profit for the flags go to uh, a charity. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and here I took a picture of... The flags that we got, yeah, outside of McSorley's while Brian was busy inside of McSorley's <laughs> doing his thing. <laughs> okay, then let's see. We got to pass through these pictures, and we decided to go to one more place, which turned out to be. First, we were going to go to Queens because there were a lot of Russians in parts of Queens, and I found online a Russian supermarket, but we didn't go there. Yeah, because. Someone reminded me that Cheap Said Bay has Russian, the Russian population. So we parked the car in Cheap Said Bay, but I got sidetracked by this poster here. <laughs> it's a, a sign in front of this place called Cheap Said Bay Roll Roaster. Roll, roll and Roaster. Roll and Roaster. Yeah. It's an unbelievable sign. Why don't you tell about it while I take a picture? <laughs> it's a woman, I guess a waitress. No, more. tell about the place. Oh, the place. Well, they, when you came in, it was kind of like an old school type diner. So it was be, like being back in the 1950s. There's the picture. And we had, they had very good food. We got clam chowder and we had fried shrimp. And both of them were really good. Yes, Not, we picked the uh, white clam chowder. Yeah, New England. New you England clam chowder. You, it was better than you get in Cape Cod, I think, I would have to say. <laughs> it was really good. I mean... The atmosphere was not like a fancy place, but that's what you want. You don't want to have like this fancy place with this stupid little tiny bowl of clam chowder that <laughs> that you don't even know if there's any clams have ever been in the chowder. <laughs> but this was full of clams, full of good taste. You didn't even need pepper, and it was just served on a, like a plastic tray in a little cup. I had, then we I ordered the uh, fried shrimp, which was only like six dollars. Those are really good too. Unbelievably good with ketchup and tartar sauce and lemon 
and a fork and coleslaw. The coleslaw was a dollar fifty. All very good. And I was thinking maybe we should have another order of fried shrimp because we just shared one order, but it was too full. Yeah, it was good. Anyway, so we went there, and then it was kind of pretty cold. It's been cold a little bit these last few days. Um. Oh, tell them about how it looks like a church. Oh yeah, the inside of it. Some parts of it kind of look like an old-fashioned church. Yeah, they have like a tabernacle. It was like a tabernacle of good food. And in the front, they had uh, these signs. Their menu was on these tablets. I thought I took a picture of the tablets. Maybe I did when we went back for the ice cream. Yeah. Because I got the idea that this place <coughs> is like a shrine to America of the past. And uh, I'll show this in the paper. But there are like three tablets. And I, and I showed you the Mel Brooks clip in the history of the world yeah. where Moses originally had three tablets. <laughs> he came <laughs> out with the three tablets, but then he, and there were 15 commandments. <laughs> but then he dropped one. <laughs> so anyway, you know what happened with that. But anyway, they got three three tablets with the you could with the menu there, which included Caesar salad, and you could even get champagne, a bottle of champagne. You could get a uh, Heineken for three fifty, red or white wine for four ninety five, or Moet for fifty nine ninety five. <laughs> Where do you have that? Anyway, so then we we just went to a few other places. This place called the Oda House. Georgian says, restaurant. Georgian restaurant, but not Georgia from like uh, Southern Fried Chicken, Georgia, but the real, the other Georgia. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I took a peek inside, and I'm too old now. I don't want to get in there and get in a fist fight with these giant <laughs> Russian guys, so I didn't go. I'm too chicken. You know, Russia I'm, invaded Georgia, too, not that long ago. Yeah. I guess I'm vulnerable. Then I just took a picture of a giant yacht looking thing. Yeah. And then a few more you support Ukraine things. But, you know, and then I thought, saw something very cool on the way back. We drove back down Coney Island Avenue. There was a, a big building that says Russian Advertisement Informative Commercial Weekly. It was a, they put out a Russian paper, and in the window, it says Stand with Ukraine. Yeah, and a big Ukrainian flag. So that was cool. But then, this is unbelievable. <laughs> Am I recording this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then... Ryan, oh, there's a flower store called the Flower Czar. <laughs> Czar was before the, the Soviets. We passed by Czar Caviar, spelled differently. But then Brian said, oh, look at that. On the top of a building called Galaxy Tire Shop, are these two giant posters. <laughs> I can, I'll take a picture of this one. Why don't you explain? You got a picture of Putin wearing the military helmet with the Z on it. And then it says war criminal. And it's a huge poster yes. on top of the building. We need so this. everyone can see it on the cars driving by. I think Marco Polo restaurant should put that right in the window. Yeah. Hold on. What happened to the picture here? Oh, here. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Maybe I should just... Get and they have time. something in Russian, too, but we couldn't get a good translation. Yeah. Yeah, so if anybody knows how to read that, let us know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll put it in the paper. That's a good one. And then uh, we ended up kind of making our way back to uh, Red Hook. We talked to the uh, guy at the fishing shop. <coughs> oh, yeah, the bait and tackle store. Yeah, he said that people there don't really talk about it. The, the conflict that much he said even though he said there are Russians and Ukrainians living there but from what he knows they never talk about it together yeah I mean I guess what can you say when let's say uh, although I remember there were quite a few arguments when we were involved in Vietnam yeah. both pro and con but usually the pro were my age now and the con would be your age, 
but here it's more like it's hard to say. It's like you know what? I kind of wish that. More, okay, here's my my little speech. If we believe in an international order where people respect borders, where you could build a building and not have somebody else come and bomb it, uh, where you could live in a world uh, where uh, people don't needlessly suffer, it's true that every minute there are people suffering all over the world. God only knows what goes on in North Korea. But this is like a place, you know, Ukraine, especially Kiev, is kind of very similar to New York City. So imagine if every day there would be artillery shells knocking down all the fancy condos that, uh, you know, at the beginning of this, I said, how can I get involved with uh, the whole situation? And and I, I, I paid for a couple Airbnb rooms in Kiev just to be able to give people directly some money. I didn't go there. But uh, when you go look at Airbnb in Kiev, you see that people advertise their houses just like we do. They're just as nice. It's very cosmopolitan. And, and like, you know, yes, when Sandy came, it demolished a few things, but that was Mother Nature. This is the Russian bear doing these things. Mm -hmm. And come on, give me a goddamn break. And, like, uh, this will be an interesting, you know, for nothing else, I'm glad to be able to have the usage of the paper to let people remember that uh, they're fighting for us. Yeah. And, you know, if I ever liked the Soviet Union even for a little bit, I would say that's done. Nobody should be doing those things. That's it. I think that's it. You don't have a soapbox? <laughs> All I'd say is Slava Ukraine. What do you say about the Russian hockey players? Well, Panarin from the Rangers spoke out against Putin, and they were worried about his family and stuff. But I'd say if you've been uh, pro-Putin and you're in America, you don't have the same propaganda. You can see the videos. You can see what's happening, and you know it's wrong. And every little... Every little donation, every little one person speaking out, it does make a difference in the end because those little things add up. Spoken like a true activist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you next month. Slava Ukraine. Ukraina. Yeah.